right, it is 6.33, and I'm going to call this meeting to order of the Champaign County Board Committee of the Whole. Uh, clerk, could you please call the roll? Esri. Here. Fortado. Goss. Here. Hanauer Friedman. Here. Harper. Here. Ingram. No. Locke. Here. Lockshin. Here. Michaels. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rogers. Present. Sexton. Store. Present. Straub. Here. Taylor. Here. Thorslin. Vantage Theranaut. Here. Williams. Wilson. Here. Carter. Here. Cowart. Fortado. Patterson. Here. Um, next, could I have an approval of the agenda? All right, uh, Taylor and Michaels. Uh, are there any suggestions for a change, Mr. Storr? Thank you, Chair Patterson. I'd like to move item uh, Roman numeral 7, B, C, number 1, amending the schedule authorized position for the Public Defender's Office to the uh, top of the personnel, policy personnel and appointments. All right. Um, can we treat that as a friendly amendment, Diane and whoever the other one was? Can we then just also, isn't, oh no, that's, never mind, it's not on my committee. Forget what, forget it. All right. I was thinking there was a finance vote. There's not. All right. Um, uh, any other discussion? All right. Uh, all those in favor of approving the agenda as amended? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The next item is the approval of the minutes from January 10th, 2023, regular meeting of a motion. D don't all do it at once. Uh, let's see, uh, Carter and um, election. Yeah. All right, uh, any discussion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Next, we have public participation. I do not have any slips, nor are there any members of the public, so I'm going to assume uh, we can skip that. Uh, next, board to board communication. Does anybody have? Mr. Wilson? Happy thanks. I mean, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> happy uh, Valentine's Day. I hope you enjoy your candy. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, next, policy personnel appointments. Mr. Storr. Thank you. Uh, the public defender is here if she'd like to uh, uh, speak to uh, item 7BC1, amending the schedule of authorized positions for a public defender's office. And uh, if you're looking through your hymn book, it's on page 24 and 25. There we go. Um, thank you for accommodating me. Um, I have to coach sixth grade basketball at 7.30, so I need to get out of here as quick as I can. Um, my agenda item is for the addition of the secretarial position to our, our structure. Um, I wanted to be here to answer any questions that anybody has. I made a presentation to the full board at the January meeting, which went over the need that we have for that additional position and how I plan to fund it. Uh, just as a refresher, uh, and I did speak with Michelle earlier this week to confirm that we're on the same page about numbers. Uh, I have about $76,000 in unspent personnel that will take me through the end of the year. I have two unfilled positions, which if they were filled, would take me far over my personnel budget. But I have made an executive decision not to fill those positions at this time because we had other needs that were um, more important that needed to be taken care of with that funding. So those two positions are going to remain unfilled uh, until hopefully the fiscal year 24 budget process when I'm going to be asking for additional funds to uh, compensate those individuals should I be able to get them hired. 
We have made a lot of progress since I started. Um, we are now at 14 attorneys. We have room for 16. So we now have two people in each felony courtroom. We are fully staffed in traffic, misdemeanors, juvenile adjudication, juvenile delinquency, and every other area. So our, our real need is still for two additional felony attorneys. It also happens to be the area that's hardest to fill because we need experience and lateral transfers are difficult to obtain. There's not a lot of people applying for those positions. So I actually have two people in mind who I'm gonna go after once I have the money to do that. Um, I'm not sure the public defenders in other counties are gonna appreciate me very much for that, but that's just too bad. Um, so in the meantime, because we don't have the money to fill those two positions and because we finally have our heads above water in terms of the caseload, that is why I'm requesting some of that unspent personnel be allocated to the additional secretarial position for fiscal year 23. And I'm happy to answer any additional questions that any of you have. Dr. Furtado. Um, I am in support of this. I just want to make sure, though, that everybody on the board understands that if you're voting for this now, you are also, I mean, I think ethically, you should be also then saying that you will support it in 2024 because we don't want to support a position now that we don't anticipate funding in the 2024 budget. I know that's not a decision we make now, but I think that, and I also think to Tammy and to the administrative staff that have to start putting the budget together, that we should take a vote that we're doing now signaling that that's what we anticipate doing in the 2024 budget cycle. But I do support it now. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Diane Michaels. Yeah, just real quick, I feel the same way as Stephanie. Um, certainly support it now, but sustaining it in the future, um, do you have an idea of how much you're going to be asking for approximately? I mean, I'm not asking you to get down to the nickels or dimes of this, but in kind of a general field, are we talking, is this a 30, 40, 50? Sure. So right now I've got 76500 available in unspent personnel. About 30 of that would go to fund the secretarial position that I'm asking for now, which would leave us with about 45 left over for two positions, each of which should be between 65 and 75,000. So if we take the 65 and between 65 and 75 for those two positions, I'd be asking to add those into the fiscal year 24 budget. That being said, I'll take the secretary now and only one attorney next year if that's what it takes because that's how important it is for my support staff to have the relief and also for us to increase our communication with our clients. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Locke. Ms. Pollock, did I hear you right that there's 14 attorneys and only two secretaries? Correct. Okay, so um, this is more of a comment. I fully support this. Um, in my days, we had two, sec or two attorneys per secretary. So it, this is opening up the county to lawsuits for people not being communicated with, for people not being prepped properly because the attorneys are doing secretarial work. So whatever the cost, I fully support this. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Ms. Carter. I just had a, a general question. Um, you said you've hired five attorneys. Are they working any other cases outside just the public defender's office? Just, no. just wondering. Okay. We're not allowed to. Okay. Um, and, and even if we were allowed to, I wouldn't permit it. Okay. Because I think our focus needs to be on our clients, not on extracurricular activities. Right. That's why I wanted some clarity with that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Wil Mr. Wilson. Hey, thank you. And thank you for being here tonight. And I hope your team wins. Um, so far, not so good, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, I have a son, a grandson, excuse me, in uh, freshman at Central. And they played Centennial, and they lost by 50 points. <laughs> I feel their pain. <laughs> it was a bad day. Uh, but, hey, uh, my real question is, I understand the ask. By agreeing for the secretary now, implies we're a green in the future. Is that the right process or is it really a green for now for this fiscal year and then having that discussion for the budget going forward? We'll definitely have a robust discussion for the budget going forward, including can we fund both of her positions. What I'm saying is I don't think it's good faith of this board to say we'll give you a position now that we intend to yank away from you in six months that if you're voting for this now, 
I think, I mean, yes, there definitely will be a discussion. We have a, you know, a pretty robust discussion about all of our personnel. But I don't think, I don't, if you plan, put it this way, if you plan to vote no, or if you plan to not want to fund the secretarial position in the 2024 budget process, I would ask that you vote no now because um, I don't think, A, that's fair to the person we're hiring. It's not fair to the public defender. We don't usually do a lot of midterm um, personnel or chart changes, but sometimes there's needs that are so pressing. We have another one that's coming up later in the agenda that we consider them midterm. We usually try to only do these things during the budget process. Um, but I think I would, I do think that this particular case has risen to the level of need to address that org chart shift now mid-year. But because of what you're talking about, we don't typically, we do not typically change our organizational chart mid-year. But, you know, there's an exception to every. Mr. Goss. Thank you. Um, I'm really conflicted for that reason and that reason only of both these two positions. Um, it's hard for me to take it out on you since you didn't start till December. So um, I'm a little curious why this ask wasn't last year in the budget. I mean, we didn't we didn't have this kind of massive change in a hurry. So um, probably going to support this, but. But again, I don't want this to become a trend where we think we can add positions throughout the year. This this is done in the, just so you all know, my opinion, this is done and done only at budget time. And the only reason we're able to fund this is because we're doing reasonably well financially. And that could go away in a blink's eye. So, um, you know, I think I'll support this. But, and again, I can't take it out on you because you didn't start till December. So that's that's the other reason is I think you've, from what I've seen, you've done an admirable job in a very, very short period of time. So thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that. And I will say that we did have a third secretarial position some time ago. Uh, it was eliminated during a budget process, I believe between 2008 and 2010. I'm not 100% sure on the date. Um, and I think, you know, part of the reason why I was brought in is because I wasn't part of the county thinking at the time. So I'm being creative with what I think the office's needs are. And because it's such an emergency, I wouldn't be asking if I didn't think it was absolutely necessary. Ms. Van Vinich, there or not? Thanks, Chris. Um, as someone who has been on the receiving end of calls and still- Could, could you record, speak a little closer? As someone who has been on the receiving end of those calls in that position and has, I think I still hold the record for 127 calls in a day, um, please God get those women help. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Because ma you are gonna lose more if you do not. Correct. Mr. Esri. I too am conflicted. Um, as of right now, I guess I'm probably leaning towards voting no only in large part, there are still some positions from 2008. Here, this is one of them, but other other departments that have still haven't been recovered and filled yet too. And the idea, again, Mr. Goss has said, I mean, it's it, it, this is a tough one. I know, I know, it, it hasn't been, you know, something common. This is an exception. It's there's no doubt it's needed. No doubt in my mind, but it's just, yeah, the whole process and it is kind of the idea if we do it now, but by chance in the budget process, we don't fund. I mean, yes, I would, if, if I vote for it, if I were to vote for it tonight, I would intend to, but if we haven't gone through the budget process and that would probably, as of right now, I am probably intending still to vote no, but I understand everybody who votes yes. so. That's just where I stay. I mean, it's not a great situation. Allow me to argue with you for a moment, if you would. <laughs> so um, I would encourage everyone to think about this in the terms of fiscal responsibility, because if you imagine right now the clients of the Public Defender's Office, which are in the thousands, many of whom, over 380 of whom, are currently incarcerated, half of them out of county. 
So they are not seeing their attorneys on any kind of regular basis. The, the secretaries who we currently have can't get to all the phone calls. So imagine yourself or a family member sitting in a jail cell for months without any communication from an attorney, without being able to ask questions of their attorney, with not knowing when the next court date was because no letters are coming to you because the secretaries are too busy to write those letters and the attorneys don't have the time to do it either. Those are lawsuits waiting to happen. And I frankly think that under the rules of professional conduct that we are mandated to follow, we are required to perform that level of communication and we are physically incapable of doing it right now. That is a lawsuit waiting to happen, which will be a far, far greater liability than the money that I'm currently asking for. If, if I can just say something real quick. You know, I think that's where the empathy comes in as a public servant um, for your constituents, right? I think that's when that part, you empathize with people and the fact that they're struggling, they don't have enough staff to cover the, the workload. I mean, I think it's a simple yes to this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Ms. Lakshin. Oh, there we go. Um, I agree with Mr. Esri and Mr. Goss in that, you know, I, I don't want to make a habit out of this, but also Mr. Goss's point that you did just start in January. This is the beginning of February. You're setting up your house the way you need it. And your statement that you would forego an attorney in favor of this position really speaks to the need for it. And I think in order for you to be able to do your job and for your attorneys to do their jobs, it seems like this is a really important yes right now. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you have further comment? Thank you. Still learning protocol. I'll eventually get there. Maybe a year from now, I'll, I'll figure this out. Um, I where is my position? My position is I absolutely agree that there's the need there, and I should. I also believe it should be filled right away. So I don't disagree with that. And based upon my short tenure here, I understand there's other staffing issues. You know, with Tammy's group and uh, with. Um, I think Steve Summers, right, needs extra support also. I guess my caution is, and I applaud your due diligence to figure out what you need in your organization because that's your right and responsibility, and I applaud you for doing that. But I also applaud um, the fact that if it's better to have a secretary than an attorney, knowing that you already have 12 or 14 or 3 million, whatever, but if you already have 12, then maybe that's the right. I want us to consider that from a reorganization effectiveness standpoint. If the public defender's office functions better with an attorney, with a secretary less an attorney, then that should be also part of our considerations during the budget cycle. And that's the end of my comment. And I'm, I'm happy to provide data on that as well because a study done by a professor at Northwestern University comparing our caseload to what the appropriate caseload should be per council says that we should have 27 attorneys. So I would love to have those two last positions funded. I'm gonna ask for that to be funded. And when I ask for that, I'm gonna present the data that supports that. Uh, the fact is, is that right now the immediate need is for a secretarial position, but that does not by any means denigrate the need for the additional attorneys either. We should have four felony attorneys in each courtroom. We're supposed to have between 100 and 150 cases per attorney. We've got 350 to 400 per attorney right now based on my calculations. So um, we should have even more than we do have, but because of the hard working staff that I have and because they're putting in extra hours and because they're working themselves into the ground, we have been able to get our heads above water, but that's all we are. We are above water for the first time in a while but we are not really floating yet. Uh, Ms. Jomala Rogers, please. Um, I also support this, and she's, what did she say? She hired five additional attorneys, but if those attorneys are overworked because they don't have the assistance of a, a secretary, they're also going to leave, and we'll be right back in the position we were when she came in December. As someone who works a lot of hours, I'm an attorney, um, I rely a lot on my secretary. I can't answer phone calls when I'm in court. I can't answer emails when I'm in court. You need the support staff to help you. So this is a yes, now and in the future. 
Thank you, Ms. Rogers. Uh, uh, seeing no other hands up and there being pretty good discussion, I think we could handle this by a voice vote. All in favor of the of the motion to uh, for adding the uh, position to the defender's office, please indicate by saying aye, aye, aye. Uh, those opposed. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Ms. Okay, uh, Chairman Kyle Patterson moved and Ms. Lockshin seconded. Now, and, and we will vote a second time. Although, this is your chance to change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to embarrass you. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for coming, Ms. Pollack, and, and good luck to your team. Thank you. Uh, next is the monthly HR report on pages 7 through 10. Let me see if I've got something marked here. And uh, we have a... A, a review and a recommendation for a financial specialist on page 11. I'll call your attention to that. Uh, we've discussed uh, we've discussed this in in the past. This is not a motion, but it's. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's page 11 to 15. I misread that. Okay. Recommendation to the Finance Committee for approval of the creation of the financial uh, finance specialist position in the Administrative Services Department to be assigned to grade range J, effective February 24th, 2023. Do I have a motion? Uh, Ms. Straub? And, and Ms. Rogers uh, seconds. Uh, I, we, we've had some discussion on this uh, previously. Uh, does anybody have would like to comment on it? Uh, Dr. Furtado. Um, I'm going to echo a lot of what I just said in the last position, although this one is a little bit different. It will require financing now. Um, I typically don't like to do these mid-year. Everything I said last time, I'm saying for this time too. Um, but I think that um, this is a position that we've needed for a very long time. Um, it is a position that backs up things that currently have no backup, like payroll, for example. Um, I think if it's a position we need to be a functioning county, um, I think we've um, sort of pushed our finance staff to their limits um, over the last couple of years, and at some point we need to address that. Um, I guess we could wait until the budget process. If we did that, I would be completely supporting it and advocating for it then. Um, and so I don't see that there's any reason why I wouldn't completely support it and advocate it now. Um, I appreciate the due diligence um, that folks put into this, Tammy, Michelle, that, um, that the, that the um, admin staff put into this. Um, I think um, this is a position that was not, um, gotten rid of in 2008, it was gotten rid of in 2018 under the last executive, I guess. And um, it shouldn't have been, frankly. And I think putting it back in is the right thing to do. What? Was, do we know, do we? The, the executive is sworn in December of 2018, so it might, this might have been something under the last county administrator. Oh, okay. I get, all right, maybe, it, okay, so I, yeah, I guess you're right. It predates that, so. Um, but regardless of when it moved, got, got, was gotten rid of, it's just you can't have a functional government and not have backup to some of your key functions, like have no support staff for some of your key functions. Um, so, for example, for right now, our person who runs payroll, if they're going on vacation, have to time it so that, like, they don't, like, in between running the payroll. 
Also, this is a person who's been in that position for quite a while, isn't going to work here forever. When they leave, it would be nice to have somebody who knows something about that job that's being done, right? Um, yeah. Thank you. Is there other comment, uh, Mr. Goss? Yeah, just a quick clarification. Um, this, this actually got bumped up from I to J, but we need to change that in the job description. Um, it's not right in either job description here or back in the finance. It still says I. So we ought to, we ought to just get that changed for clarification is all. Okay, it's I'm looking on page comment. 11 and it says recommended 13. class. Look at page 13 on the job oh, description. Oh, it's, okay. Uh, good catch. Good catch. Um, Megan, can you kind of? Okay, thank you. I, I, I think we'll get that taken care of. Good catch. Thank you. Any any other comment, uh, Mr. Adversary? Yes, thanks. Um, this one I will be supporting in large part because it's gone through the process. This is truly creating a position. It's a position. I mean, it's not just potentially now I can I know everyone who voted for the last one intends to vote for it in the budget I understand that that has I have no problem with that but this one has truly gone through the process and is truly creating a position saying hey we're gonna fund it and I mean granted it can be eliminated later on but it's it's funded through the budget process and it it's intending to continue on from here on so thank you and uh, somebody I think somebody pointed out to me, a person on the right perhaps, that this position had existed, it, it, that, that this had existed until 2018 in the Administrative Services Department, and so it's, it's kind of coming back. I see no other hands up. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> just one more comment. I support this also, just like I did the previous one. It just appears from a new person's perspective that we're in the process of reorganizing the county staffing. And so is there a process where we go back and look through what the appropriate staffing level is, FTEs, is that in, carried within the budget or is there another process for doing that? Because I 100% agree that to have ineffective government is miserable, right? And we wanna have effective government, we wanna have people that love their job and also wanna support the community and have the backup they need in order to be successful at it. So does it appear that we're going down the path of reorganizing various staff positions inside the county. If there's no one who else who wishes to speak to this, I th I, I'll go ahead. Uh, we, back in November, we elected a new county executive. And in, in one sense, we're kind of helping that executive to arrange their administrative staff in a way that that can meet the way the, the, the way that they that they see the off, the office of the executive running Champaign County government and I I think that we'll probably have a pretty good discussion about staffing as we move along in the budget process. And that would be the time to kind of bring some of these. Unfortunately, this is kind of brought up as a bit of a recognized need. Ms. Michaels. Just real quick here, in, in the back of my mind, I think that new committee that is being formed that's going over and evaluating um, different positions and whatnot, maybe that's the committee that would also look at reorganization. I, I hear what you're saying. 
And I think what we're looking at is maybe a reorganization of each of the departments when we look at the salaries and the levels. And I think that's part of what Mr. Wilson is talking about. And maybe that could be covered under that new committee. I'm going to pick, come, come to that it, it, under the chair's report. Uh, Ms. Straub. I just wanted to point out that this is also, um, to some extent, I believe, in response to the audit that we had done several months ago under Executive Kleppel, um, and one of, and this was one of the recommendations by by that um, Gallagher. I don't know what consultant. consultant. Thank you. That's the word that wouldn't come. Um, and, and so, so yes, there is reorganization, but it is in response to a countywide audit that we had done. Dr. Furtado. Yes, and I, I think I could be wrong. I think this is the only time we, I don't recall having done these mid-year since I've been on the board. So this is very unusual, since 2017. So this is very unusual. I do think that, um, these things are better done through the budget process. But I also think, um, in not just in these offices, but across the board, that there's been a lot of like scrambling just to kind of keep the lights on in this county. Um, we have this Gallagher report. I think thinking about it in a more robust way going forward is going to be important. Um, but my guess is that this sort of evaluation does not only need to happen in admin and public defender, but is something that should be done across the county. Are we staffed properly? Um, does our org chart re actually reflect the needs of what we're doing in a county? Um, I, I would prefer we don't do this piecemeal. Um, and the last thing is, could um, Mr. Gosser, Mr. Wilson, would you flip up the public participation mic? Thank you, Dr. Furtado. And I, I, I think Kyle Patterson has, uh, the Chair Patterson has a Thanks. Comment. Appreciate it. Um, I guess, and also to uh, Mr. Wilson's point about sort of re-examining the positions and you know making determinations on what is effective. I, really, I think that's the role of the department heads who do the day-to-day -day work. Um, I mean, it's easy for us to look at a sheet of paper with a bunch of charts and try to decide you know what it takes to get the day-to-day -day work done. But I think it's the responsibility of the department heads to come to us with those requests and you know to make the decisions on what changes they need to make. I mean, example, uh, when Treasurer Johnson took office, she realized that the, the description of the chief deputy hadn't been updated in something like 17 years, and, and the position had been doing way more than what was in that description. Um, so I think it's really on them to re-examine job descriptions and, you know, figure out what is appropriate. And I will say as far as um, these two offices, because this one falls under the executive, neither the current executive nor the public defender uh, was in their role uh, the last time we did the budget process. So to me, the, the exceptions sort of make sense. I don't see any other hands up, or at least I don't think I do. And a motion having been made and seconded, uh, I'll ask all in favor of the motion to uh, send this to the Finance Committee, signify by saying aye. 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 All those in, in opposition to the motion, there being none, uh, Motion passes unanimously. Appointments and reappointments. Uh, item uh, number seven, A, number three, uh, sub A, resolution appointing Gerald Kellums as animal control administrator, term ending February 28, 2025. We have a motion, Ms. Lee Taylor, Leah Taylor. Second by Beth and Nitch Darinot. I love saying that. Uh, is there a discussion to the motion? My goodness. Uh, <laughs> all those all those in favor of the motion uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? 
Motion carries unanimously. Very good. Uh, I'd like to do the uh, resolutions B and C together, appointing uh, Win Wendy Hundley to Rural Transit Advisory Group, term ending December 31st, tw uh, 2024, and resolution appointing R Rick Williams to Rural Transit Advisory Group, term ending uh, December 31st, 2024. So moved. Uh, oh. Diane Michaels Second, moves, please. and it, and and Kyle pa uh, Chair Patterson seconds. Is there is there discussion to the motion? All in favor of the motion to appoint these two people, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, those uh, opposed. Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Uh, item D, additional county board liaison appointments. Uh, you'll find those on page 20, and that is uh, by the county executive appointing uh, Samantha, Vice Chair Samantha Carter to the Champaign-Urbana Urbanized Area Transportation Study Policy Committee. Uh, and uh, appointing Jennifer Locke to the Visit Champaign County uh, group and uh, Steve Summers to Central Illinois Land Bank Authority. Uh, and I suppose, do we, do we vote on these? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion, uh, Mr. Esri? Oh, and Mr. Goss. Uh, second, sorry, I'll get you, Kyle, uh, next time. Uh, do we have, do we have discussion for these uh, three appointments? Uh, Mr. P M P Chair P Patterson. Thanks. Um, and I do want to also note that at the bottom it does list. Um, I think there's only three remaining uh, vacancies that the tra uh, liaison vacancies. Um, so we have. There's a Republican seat for Community Action Board, uh, Region 8 Human Services, Human Service, uh, Transportation Plan Policy Committee, and Central Illinois Land Bank. Uh, so just, you know, if anybody is interested, contact Steve about that. I, uh, I'll just throw in that the Community Action Board is a, a group that is attempting to eliminate poverty and get people from uh, unemployment to work and, and Mr. Esri um, speaking on the community action board specifically I'm not saying that I guess any number of reason probably that none of us Republicans at this point in time stepped up we think our plates are full but me looking at the bylaws and, and Mr. Summers brought this up to me I didn't see in the bylaws where it mentioned you had to have one of each party um, I saw that there was just two board members from what I saw um, maybe I'm wrong but Ms. Rodriguez I can answer that um, actually that was like a that was a preference of the county executive there's no actual requirement so it was just something that she that's, for. yeah that's what I was kind of gonna get I mean that's fine that you brought I was kind of so I was wondering if that wasn't maybe kind of a preference so but saying that if someone on the Democratic side really wants to fill the second seat as far as I know, I don't know that anyone over here again, our plates are full, we believe, is just, otherwise we'd be jumping at it. So if someone really wants to jump forward on your side, go for it probably. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Misri. Did you want to say anything to this, Ms. Rodriguez? Anything further? Just that we'd be excited to fill it, I'm sure, that's all. But thanks for offering that. Uh, thanks for reminding me of that. Uh, we have current vacant appointments list. Oh, okay. Uh, all in favor of those three appointments uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All in uh, opposition, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, 
there was a number of uh, fire protection districts, cemetery boards, and drainage district uh, vacancies that are either open or uh, will be in the near future. And those are online. Um, <clears throat> The, we have a report from the county clerk. We've already done the public defender. I don't believe there's any other business. And unfortunately, I do have a chair's report. Uh, now, bear with me. I have a oh. comment. Oh, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. My comment's really related to the the county clerk's report. Um, so in my effort to be the best possible county board member I could be, just a personal goal, uh, I like to research things and look things up. And um, I, re I remember that Kamala Harris, she loves Venn diagrams. I like reports, just from my background. Um, so when I looked at this report, I guess I had a couple of questions. The, uh, when I look at the, um, so I looked up the, the statute and the statute is 55 ILCS um, dot, dot, dot from uh, the county code. Only because I wanna understand reports and what the requirement is. And this is what the county, uh, what the statute says. It's the code says, monthly report of financial status. The county clerk shall file a monthly report summarizing the financial status of the clerk's office in such form as shall be determined by the county board. So here's my question. Um, and part of our mission and goals, when I look through our mission and goals of how we wanna be the, the best county for county board people in the state of Illinois, one of those items is is called uh, financial transparency. And when I look at this report, my, my curiosity is I'm not seeing the financial status. Or is this what the board figures is the financial status of the county clerk's office? And I would ask that question of any office if they're required by statute to provide such a report. So that's kind of an open-ended question I'm not seeing the financial status. I'm seeing a couple of line items, but I don't know if the clerk's office is financially on track or off track or it needs help or stuff like that. So that, um, Chris, is my comment. Okay, I think that that might, some of the, if I understand you correctly, some of your question might be answered in the auditor's monthly report. Uh, and he's, it, that's on, the uh, third blue page down at the bottom, in at, close to the bottom of finance. Uh, maybe somebody from the finance committee could help Mr. Wilson with that. Stephanie? I, I will say that this report has been the report that I've received since I've been on this board from this clerk, from the previous clerk's administration, this has always been the format for the clerk's report, um, reporting on these categories. Um, if, if the board is interested in receiving something else, um, maybe that's a kind of conversation that we could have, but this, is, this has always been the report that we've received. Um, if, it, if it meets the statutory requirements, I mean, I guess that's something I could ask the state's attorney's office. My guess is the answer is yes, just because this is literally, I mean, my guess is a report that looks exactly like this is what we've been getting for I don't know, decades now. Um, I don't know when this format was decided upon, but it probably predates everybody in this room except, I don't know, maybe Mr. Harper's been on the board that long. Okay, so, so yeah, so if it's been on, how long have you been on the board, Stan? Yeah, <laughs> so this has always been the report. Um, but I, um, that's all I have. I don't really have any more insight beyond that. Ms. Carter. 
just for clarity purposes, are you saying you would like to compare numbers from year to year? Or, I mean, I'm trying to get the gist of what your, your comment is, is pointing out. What are you? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I understand your question. Yeah. I was, what I'm doing is I'm reading for education and I read what the statute says. Mm -hmm. The statute does, the auditor does the auditor job, treasurer does the treasurer job, clerk does the clerk job. I'm not saying the clerk is doing anything wrong. I'm just saying that in my viewpoint, it seems even though it's precedence and we've been doing this since, you know, forever, just because we've done something forever and we've lived with that condition doesn't mean it should always be the condition we stay in. Just like with the public defender, she's living with a bad condition and we're working to solve it. The treasurer needs help and we're working to help, not the treasurer, the finance director is looking for help and so we're helping the finance department. And for me, it's not connecting the dots from a completeness standpoint. It's just telling me I have this amount of money that I spent on these items, but I don't see it as giving me the financial status, status, S-T-A-S-T-S, of the department. And I understand the auditor audits the reports, but still it has to come from somewhere. And that's really my question. If, if we do this for the rest of our lives, fine. I'm making an opinion and an observation. Okay. Uh, hey, we, we have somebody here from the county clerk's office, Ms. Angie Patton. And Angie, oh, no. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to make sure well, the clerk didn't oh, want to speak. Right? Oh. He's hiding behind I, me. He's right well, here. he is, actually. And, uh, Aaron, you're doing a very good job as offensive lineman. And I, I didn't see uh, Clerk Ammons back there. Ms. Clerk Ammons, would you care to speak to Mr. Wilson's uh, comment or question? No. Just really quick. Um, I, I just want to make sure that board member Wilson understands what he's seen and that these are not expenditures, that this is revenue uh, generated for the county. Yeah, I see that. So I'm not seeing expenditures. Are you saying there's no expenditures or this you're only tracking revenue? No, I was just clarifying the point because earlier you said that these were expenditures on the sheet and I just wanted to make sure that you understood that it was revenue. Yes, thank you. I, I, I think that some of what you're asking for, expenditures and, and, and so forth, might be under the auditor's uh, report. If you, Are you looking for uh, things that the department is spending? Oh, I, I don't want to belabor this. I'm just saying if I have money coming in, I have money coming out. This is where my starting budget is for the month. This is my ending budget for the month. That's like really simple it's not yeah. like a detailed analysis of every line i was like i had x amount of money coming in i had x amount of money coming out I, this is my starting budget this is my end engine budget if that's a monthly report that's what i was looking for something real simple i i i don't think anything in county in county government is is as, is as simple as you might expect Ms. Patton, you want to uh, elaborate, please? Just, Help us. Yeah, just really quick. That is covered in the auditor's financial and his monthly report. There's detailed um, documentation about expenditures from each office. Ms. Rodriguez? I also just like for the sake of maybe the flow of the meeting, want to distinguish between you know criticisms or comments and actual questions. It seems like we're trying to smash this into a question. I think he was just making a commentary. We can move. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. And I'll uh, try to get back on track here. And I was going to uh, make a chair's report. Uh, the it, it happens that uh, the, the county board and its in its wisdom, uh, gave the Economic Development Corporation some money to uh, uh, build a website and do some work to try to attract uh, talent uh, for people who need, uh, or, or for employers and, and people looking for employment in Champaign County. 
And I'm very pleased to report that Ms. McCrory said that there's a lot of progress on that uh, initiative and that she'd like to come and make a presentation at a future meeting, perhaps as early as March or April. And, uh, and one of those uh, positions that we're uh, apparently looking for in that uh, is in the uh, uh, in Champaign County for the human resources person to uh, help in the uh, county executive's office. And I think many of us were less than satisfied with the uh, presentation by the Ball Gallagher co uh, consultants last uh, last fall, and uh, and probably not very many have have read through the you know hundreds of pages of of the report uh i i did and uh but i think that it would be a really uh good uh way forward for uh the 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 board to uh when the uh human resources person is finally hired uh for us to uh, give that person a chance to digest or read and digest the uh, Gallagher report and then uh, hold a, a, a study session uh, with the human resources officer and then uh, we could at that time uh, bring a, a lot of questions or a lot of uh, 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 seek some discussion on how we might kind of uh, deal with some of the things that we've talked with this evening, like uh, compensation for uh, employees, for uh, staffing, staffing needs, and uh, and trying to uh, do the things that are necessary to try to keep our uh, little county government going. So uh, that's uh, Ms. Carter. Could you share the um, <clears throat> the report, the Gallagher report, with the new members, please? I I think I shared them with everybody who asked for them, and and uh, and and that's available from Ms. Rita Kinchlow. Uh, it, it, some of these are very long, or very large files, videos, and and so forth. And uh, I I. If, if anybody has an interest in it, I've, I've got notes of my own, and I can kind of direct you to uh, some of the uh, summary results. There's very quiet, and I've noticed that it happens a lot after my lectures. Uh, Chair Patterson. Designation of items to be placed on the consent agenda. Shoot. Yeah. Cool your jets, Chris. Okay. I'll get there. I'll get there. Thank you. Uh, items uh, designated to be placed on the consent agenda are Roman numeral 7A, 2, 3, A, B, and C, and D. And item... B, or excuse me, C, number one. Nope. Oh, you're right. That's a minus one. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Just those four, uh, just those three. Just those three. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, next on the agenda is Justice and Social Services. Ms. Taylor. Thank you, Chair Patterson. Uh, item A, we have the monthly reports that are available on each department's webpage, uh, probation and court services for December of 2022, as well as their fourth quarterly report, uh, the public defender's report for December 2022 and January 2023, animal control report December 2022 and January 2023, uh, emergency management agency November 2022, December 2022 and January 2023. Uh, item B, we have the Rosecrans Reentry Financial Report for December of 2022. That's information only, page 26 of your packets. Um, I do not have any other business. I don't see any hands. 
Um, for the chair's report, I do want to say um, I am hoping to get Misty Bell here for our March 14th cow to come talk to us, um, as Dr. Stowe had requested last month. I do not have any items to be placed on the consent agenda. So right back to you, Chair Patterson. All right. Uh, next we have finance. Um, the first item is budget transfer BUA 2022-12961, fund uh, 2076 tort immunity tax fund, Department 075 General County, amount $20,936. The reason the 2022 workers' compensation renewal resulted in greater than expected rate increases and higher than expected costs. This coupled with the collective bargaining wage increases led to greater than budgeted workers' compensation costs. Do I have a motion? Ms. Michaels, do I have a second? Um, that's um, discussion. Mr. Goss, did you? Have, oh, that was just this. Uh, all right, sorry. Amanda Shapiro, not second. Um, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, next up, budget transfer BUA 2022 um, 121717, fund 1080 General Corporate Department 020 Auditor, amount 595. Reason, one of my favorite reasons of all times, to cover the cost of envelopes that arrived much earlier than anticipated. Um, do, uh, do I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Ingram, uh, sorry, second, I saw Vanish Spear, not again. Um, um, discussion? <laughs> um, yes, Ms. Lakshin. Just a, a quick point to that. I know it's funny, but um, we're seeing that a lot more in my day job, too. Things that had been delayed for like the last couple of years are suddenly coming much earlier than expected, so it's probably something we should start to readdress our, our brains for. I hope so. Because um, as as we'll see later down in the agenda, some supply line. We have another vote that has a, like a supply is this a supply line driven vote for the coroner's office. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next up, budget transfer BUA 2022 twelve one seven five six of five six fund ten zero eight zero general corporate department oh five seven deputy merit commission and one forty correctional center amount sixteen thousand five hundred fifty four uh, reason to transfer funds for new employee psychological exams and inmate pharmacy costs I will point out we do have the sheriff here if anybody has any questions do I have a motion um, I saw Leah first and Lakshin second um, discussion seeing none all those in favor aye, aye. opposed Trying to remember those opposed. Budget transfer BUA 2022 12 1941 Fund 2679 Child Advocacy Center, Department 179 Child Advocacy Center, amount 1731 to transfer excess personnel funds to, to cover insurance billing. Um, do I have a motion? Uh, Ms. Michaels, second. Ms. Carter, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up. Budget Amendment BUA 2022-12-1716, uh, Fund 1080 General Corporate uh, Department 026 County Treasurer, increased appropriations $27,012, increased revenue $0, reason to cover variances for the 2000 fiscal year 2017 and fiscal year 2018 accounts payable in general corporate bank accounts. Do I have a motion? Um, Vanish Fearnot and Taylor second. Um, discussion, Ms. Michaels. First off, I have a real problem with this being that long ago that we're trying to write off twenty-seven thousand dollars. This should have come to light years and years and years ago, and I guess maybe that's the the banker in me or whatever you want to call it. We don't run our books at home like this, and we darn sure shouldn't be running the county books like this. This is abominable for our group. The other thing I'd like to know is what is the breakdown between 2017 and 2018 because the audit should reflect <coughs> that there was an amount for 17 and then a cumulative amount that then would have added to the $27,000 for the 18. And then thus we've been carrying this on the books for the last several years. Thank you. 
Yeah, I would I would agree. I mean, this has been on the books. We were trying to figure this out in Finance Committee if potentially this is something that happened in the transition between Treasurer Walsh and Farney, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It goes all the way back to Treasurer Walsh. That means this has been on the books for not one, not two, not three, not four, but five treasurers. So yes, I would agree that this was something that was done and it crosses party, right? Like it was done under the Republican Party. It hadn't been cleaned up by three Democratic treasurers. So this is this is indeed not the way that th th this kind of liability shouldn't be on our books for this long. Um, that it should have been recorded correctly in 2017. It should have then been cleaned up in 2018 and not allowed to carry forward. And once and in, and it shouldn't have been going on for this long. But at this point, the only way to clean it up is to to address it from the general fund. So I'm glad we're at least doing it now. But yes, I would agree that um, that this isn't great operating procedure, and I'm glad that we are finally cleaning it up. Any other discussion? Mr. Wilson. Um, I guess I'm really not concerned about the who. I'm more concerned about the what. Well, I am more concerned about the who of the what, and I could care less about the who. I guess that's the point. Um, so how did this get discovered? Tammy, do you want to address that? Our current chief deputy auditor, um, and I, I don't know how many years he's been here, um, maybe three, um, he has done a great job of trying to take care of things like this. And so in speaking with him, um, he... Um, acknowledged that he was unable to have support available to him that would allow him to figure out, you know, where these chargebacks, NSFs, um, fees, that bank fees, et cetera, had generated from, but that in fact there was not a clean uh, reconciliation in both of these different accounts. And so um, it was him who identified that we'd been carrying this for quite some time and brought this to the attention um, of the treasurer and the board so that we could get it taken care of. Thank you. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my experience. So there's always problems. And sometimes it takes years for them to manifest. Well, I know from working at a nuclear power plant, one day you look at a document and you think, oh my goodness, how in the world did we miss that? And then we have to spend a lot of resources and things like that to fix it. And then there's generally a cause, and then there's a corrective action. My question then is on the corrective action going forward. How do we make sure this doesn't happen again, or what lessons did we learn from that? I hate to speak um, for the treasurer or the auditor, but it is my understanding that the auditor's office um, has been ensuring that reconciliations are completed and um, that any fees that have been charged are actually being recorded to the financials. Um, and I believe the auditor and treasurer are working together to identify chargebacks and the fund for which those chargebacks were associated with so then they can, the treasurer's office can work with that department um, to make sure that, uh, you know, collection of a bounce check is followed up on. Thank you. Any other discussion? Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so um, Carrie's been asking this. Uh, budget Amendment BUA 2022-12-1759 Fund 1080 General Corporate and 261 County Clerk Surcharge Fund Department 022 County Clerk Increased Appropriations $13,089.15 Increased Revenue $122 Reason to Budget to address budget shortages in office supplies, marriage surcharge, outside services, temporary staff, travel, gas, and a lecture working lines. Do I have a motion? 
um, um, Jen uh, Straub. Do I have a second? Jen Lock. Um, sorry, I'll get you next time. Um, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, budget Amendment BUA 2022-12177 um, Fund 1080 General Corporate Department 023 Recorder Increased Appropriations $12,587 Increased Revenue $12,587 Reason Appropriation Required to Send State's Portion of the Rental Housing Support Program Fees that have been collected. Do I have a motion? So moved. All right, Mr. Mr. Ingram, I saw uh, Ms. Carter second. Um, do I have a discussion? Tammy. Uh, Ms. Furtado, I apologize. I sent you a message um, later this afternoon oh, that sorry. you must not have gotten. No, There's actually a correction uh, to the appropriation amount. The budget amendment is correct. The agenda um, does not match the budget amendment. What is the correct amount? For increased appropriations, it's $11,328.22. Okay. And the revenue? It's correct. It's correct. Okay. Um, got you. Um, is that is is that okay with Mr. Ingram and Ms. Carter? Will you take that as a friendly amendment? Accept as a friendly amendment. Um, I want to say this is something that I did not, to be blunt, I didn't know what this was. Um, so what it is is for um, the transactions that the recorder does, and later you're going to see that the state legislature has increased this dollar amount to $20. It's $10. Here's what's really interesting. Um, the clerk came to our caucus today and explained this to us. We only get to keep a dollar to fund our operations, the rest of which goes to the state, then who allocates it. And I believe he said something like 43% goes to Chicago and another additional percent goes to Cook County. So 73% essentially goes to Cook County. Now, theoretically, we um, are able to, like our housing authority should be allowed to apply for grants. But in, in our clerk's estimation, um, since this has been in place, we have sent $4 million outside of our county and have only received about $100,000 back. One of the things he's been trying to advocate for with the legislature, it's stalled a few times, is that this money should stay with the counties where it's generated. And, and the idea is it's supposed to help people who need help with rental assistance, right? So, but this is something... Um, I think as a board, this is something I've brought up a few times that I think that there's more engagement that we should be doing with our state uh, legislature. And I think this is something, this is at least, we should at least be allowed to keep a bigger portion of this revenue. Um, and you'll see later that this fee has gone up to $20, but we're still only gonna get to keep $2. Right now it goes to help um, support the recorder's operation like basically it's it goes into the general fund as part of operation costs but we aren't we aren't really doing rental assistance here with it um, because we don't get to keep our money um, and we have had some success with grants but it hasn't um, we have the housing authority hasn't even really gotten that much money back in grants so this is one of those cases where we're collecting a fee that's going outside of our county for the most part. And since we have a, a formal recorder here, maybe Mr. Ingram wants to speak to this. Yeah, just to be clear, the thing that stalled a couple of times was the increase. Uh, it was killed a couple of times, uh, thankfully, by um, clerks and recorders working with state representatives and, uh, and senators. So um, there hasn't been... Uh, I, from what I've what what I saw when I was recorder, and and you know perhaps Angie can tell me that I'm uh, that I missed a, a thing in the last year, but there wasn't really a whole lot of will uh, amongst uh, legislators to look at this any deeper than just to double it, um, and so that's a little bit frustrating because there are a lot of clerks around the um, clerk recorders around the state who would like to see these books. Uh, when I was recorder, we were constantly asking to see a better breakdown of the money, where this all goes. So anybody that's watching this uh, at home or paying attention to this later on down the road, um, you know, the, the numbers that, that Ms. Furtado just mentioned, um, you know, the 90% of that going out of here um, and most of it staying in the collar counties, um, the rental, house, uh, rental housing support um, program, it's different than Section 8 and it's more uh, onerous to apply for than Section 8. So most of the landlords that could be applying for this money simply don't because it's a hard process to go through and a lot of them don't know about it as well. So um, it is, it's kind of a fundamentally flawed program and it seems to be done so, so that most of the money, there's a lot that goes to administrative part of this 
uh, you know, the administration of this money and all sorts of stuff. So um, the fact that the legislature deem, uh, deemed to, uh, to double it is super frustrating. So um, anytime that you hear anything about RHSP, uh, it is definitely something that would, from our county standpoint, we would benefit greatly from finding a better way to do this, but I don't know that the legislature can ever be convinced to do so. And I, I do want to shout out our current clerk because I know he has been spending time on this and trying to advocate with the, the like through the clerks association and not just him, but other clerks as well. But I know that he's been trying to advocate that this is a flawed program that needs to be addressed and that um, and, and specifically the issue of more of the revenue staying here is something that we need to do. And I'll just be honest, this is something I didn't know about until now. Um, yeah. Mr. Wilson, sorry. Thank you, Mike, for the education. I appreciate that. So that re results in a discontinuity on my part. And that is, how do we, is, that, is it solvable at our level or are we at the mercy of all the legislators? As many things, I would say we're at the mercy um, that you'll find out in this county that we are actually at the mercy of the legislature. But Angie, do you have a thought on that? I, I just want to add to what you're saying when you encourage the board to get involved legislatively with this, because as this got pushed through in the lame duck session, um, one of the things that had occurred to them was that they needed to have some sort of oversight of this pushed mainly by Clerk Ammons when he was advocating for more transparency on this. So as this moves through, I encourage us to kind of follow this along and we'll provide some updates. Um, but to kind of have the cart before the horse to ask for this fee increase and then it occurred to them, oh, I guess we'll need some oversight and accountability on this. So um, it's something that we're tracking very closely. Um, we're gonna be working with our local housing authority on this as well. And like I said, we'll provide some updates on that. I appreciate that. Yeah, please, please let us know if there's anything we could do, if we could be submitting witness slips or, you know, as this process goes forward. Um, Ms. Carter. And I just want to point out that anytime you're, you're dealing with um, the formerly incarcerated and, you know, um, subsidized housing, you know, those are the marginalized um, community members that it, they're already having it hard. So anything that we can do, I feel like, to help out um, with uh, increasing that fund so that those marginalized community members have access to more, um, uh, I guess, more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? help in those areas to find homes, I think that that is a good thing. So I definitely want to research this and if I could be of any help in advocating, I would really I would really like that. Thank you. To, to um, make sure that everybody's on the same page, we had a long discussion about this in our caucus. The one grant that the housing authority has received for this money is for people that are going through reentry to find housing. But one of the requirements of that grant, and I forget how much money we could have gotten, $500,000, I think like that, the housing authority. But one of the requirements is that the Department of Corrections has to recommend the person in order to do that. And we didn't get enough DOC recommendations in our county in order to participate in the program. So we only actually got 100,000. So even though the state gave us, our county, some of this money back in a grant, then the office in the state that would have had to fulfill a role in order to ensure we got that full bill. So even the grant, the one grant that we've received to get some of that $4 million back, we only got a fraction of it because the eligibility requirements were not something the housing authority could muster on their own. So that's kind of what, why Samantha was talking about formerly incarcerated because that's the only, there's other potential pots of revenue that housing authority is gonna potentially go after. Um, but even with those other pots of revenue that they could potentially go after, it wouldn't return in grants all of the money we're spending out of the county. I don't, I don't think he, it's not, he, he, it, it wouldn't be, for to answer your question, it, the sheriff's office, it's not his Department of Corrections, it's the state. Yeah, it would have to be the state uh, prison system person that would have to make the recommendations. It couldn't be from the jail side. Yeah. Um, any other 
questions or discussion? Um, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Um, budget Amendment BUA 2023-1437 Fund 2075 Regional Planning Commission Department 100 Regional Planning Commission Increase Appropriations $286,000 Increase Revenue $286,000 Reason to Receive Homeless and Housing Innovation Grant Funds Do I have a motion? Ms. Finish um Ms. Straub, second Discussion? Seeing none um, All those in favor? Aye, Aye. Opposed? Um, budget Amendment BUA 2023-1543 Fund 1080 General Corporate Department 042 Coroner Increased Appropriations 5130 Increased Revenue 5130 Reason unspent grant funds received in fiscal year 2022 need to be added to the fiscal year 2023 budget uh, for expenditure. Do I have a motion? Uh, Ms. Michael, second Mr. Goss. Discussion? This is the other side of the supply chain issue. Um, some stuff came too early, some stuff is coming too late. Um, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, Treasurer, monthly reports are available through July. Revolution, uh, next up, resolution of authorizing the cancellation of the appropriate certificate of purchase on a mobile home. Permanent parcel 30-054-0054. Do I have a motion? Uh, Ms. Van der second Ms. Straub. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, county Executive, resolution abating certain taxes. Uh, the monthly report through December are available on the auditor's, web, auditor's website. Resolution abating cer certain taxes hereto levy to pay the principal and uh, of and interest on various outstanding bond um, bonds in the County of Champaign, um, Illinois. Do I have a motion? Mr. Goss, do I have a second? Um, Ms. Rogers, second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Recommendation to the County Board for approval of the creation of the Finance Specialist position in the Administrative Services Department to be assigned to grade J, effective fiscal, uh, February 24th, 2023. This is the one we just received from um, Chris's committee. Do I have a motion? Uh, Ms. Lockshin, Ms. Mr. Patterson, second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, next up, Sheriff contract for inmate and food and commissary services pursuant to RFP 2022-011. Uh, um, I will point out the sheriff is still here hanging with us. Um, do I have a motion? Mr. Esri, second. Ms. Vanishmirnot, any questions for the sheriff? I believe we do have a question for you. Dustin, you are not here in vain. And those two are for you. No, well, thank you. All right, hey, thanks for being here. Oh. <laughs> All right, thank you for being here, Sheriff. Uh, just a couple questions, mm -hmm. or maybe an observation. Switching, I think you're going to switch over to Trinity. That's your request? That's correct. How does the meal quality of Trinity compare to your previous vendor? Well, from what I could see from my previous vendor over the last year, hopefully a lot better. I can understand hope, but that's not what I want. So, I mean, is it, do they have the, do, from a supply sourcing spot, do they just get the same meals from the same place and they're a third party person that provides the meal or do they create the meals themselves and then deliver them? They create them on site at okay. the jail. Okay. Um, I don't know what their source of grocery store for lack of a better term would be. Um, but if I didn't believe that it was the best choice, I wouldn't be bringing it to the board. I'm not disagreeing with you. It was, it was just a question, a, a less price competition. I was really concerned that the quality of the meals didn't, decline from the previous vendor. That's my concern. 
Yeah, I believe that they will not. If I did, we wouldn't be going out for Trinity. I just, and I, I'll be brief. I know we've all had a really long day. Um, kind of how this came about was that we signed a, we've had Aramark for a long time in the jail for our food and commissary service. Um, last February of 2022, we negotiated a new contract. Uh, they quoted us at 109 per meal, $1.09 per meal. Um, and then in November, I, I don't know if it's a new salesperson or who, but the new, uh, but but the person came to us and said, "We can't do this 109 per meal." And basically, my answer was, "Well, that's too bad. You've got to do this for 109 per meal." Um, and then we were starting to negotiate what the raise would, what the what the what the cost would raise in the second year, which is for the contract. Um, and there is a cap of, I believe, probably 10%, which would be the maximum that it could increase from year one to year two, and that's built into the contract. Um, he said, eh, we, we really don't care about that. We, we're going to charge you two forty four per meal. Um, and I said, okay, let's start negotiating that because that's like 126% increase. He said, nah, we're not going to, we're not going to negotiate that. That's what I need. I said, Okay, we'll go out to RFP and we will uh, see what else we can have. Um, and if you would see, they came out at 214 a meal, right? Which, I mean, if they would have done that in the first place, maybe we would have kind of negotiated that a little bit because it's a really big pain in the butt to change vendors and go through the RFP process and all of those things. Um, so I guess a little bit of my hesitancy is that you never know how the sales pitch is going to translate into real life. Aramark has really good pictures and they didn't have really good product. Trinity has really good pictures and I'm hoping that they have really good product. Um, the good thing is, is with that contract negotiation is if they don't live up to their standards, there are ways in that contract to either sever the contract or, or demand an increase in the, uh, uh, you know, in how they're doing things. Um, and so it's pretty intricate in the contract on how we can address some of the issues if they're not meeting our expectations. Thank you. I know the price of eggs has gone up. <laughs> so I think we pay more for eggs now than we did probably yesterday. But thank you for that report. I appreciate it. Sure. Any other discussion? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, last up, um, ordinance authorizing statutory fee increase on recordings in Champaign County, Illinois. Um, this is related to what we were discussing earlier. Um, this is, this the state legislature doubled that fee so we need to change our fee schedule um, in order to reflect that new legislation. Even though, you know, I have strong feelings about it, um, it is what it is. Um, discussion? Uh, oh, sorry, motion. Sorry, motion. All right, Ms. Michaels, Ms. Lockshin, discussion? Ms. Michaels. Yeah, just a quick question here because I'm not as familiar with the breakdown. Are we only increasing this fee by that rental housing amount? Okay, good. That's my understanding. Is is that correct? And yeah, all the rest of them are staying are staying pat. Recording's a lot now, so yeah. Okay, thank you. And just to clarify, voting no based on on our personal opinions about this would do nothing as far as we we are we have no power to do anything else. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't believe that that we would still have to pay it. <laughs> so yeah. we still have, if we voted no, we'd still have to pay the eighteen dollars per transaction. So we'd actually just be losing eight dollars per transaction to the state. And my guess is they will still come for our money, regardless of our personal feelings on the matter, Ms. Mr. Ingram. Yeah, they'll definitely come for their money, regardless. <laughs> um, yeah. So just, uh, just. As a reminder, so that means from now on, uh, that $10 increase will hit every single recording uh, that happens in this county, which is, um, you know, more than 20000 a year usually. So um, for every single person that buys a house, uh, that does a mortgage, that does anything like that, um, that will be a frustrating extra $10 for them. Um, but uh, just as a reminder, that has nothing to do with our 
county clerk slash recorder. That is, uh, that's thanks to the legislature. Um, and if we'd like to see some of that money come back to this uh, county in the form of rental housing support, there's a lot of work that has to be done. And a lot of people who have to be convinced, and those people are not our representatives because they are already on board. So um, unfortunately, it's a, there's a lot of representatives that live in the collar counties and Cook County, uh, and they're the ones uh, who we'd have to have some conversations with. All right, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Um, other business? Mr. Goss. Yeah, I'd like to make a, a personal plea for our treasurer to start showing up to the cow meetings. I have a serious question why we can't get a financial report since July. And I know when I asked this last quarter, it was, well, we're in the middle of the tax cycle understood we're no longer in the middle of the tax cycle except we're getting ready to start another one we don't have a financial report from the treasurer's office since july it's a bunch of bunk so i'd like to see her here at every meeting i will pass that along any other discussion um uh chair's report the only report that i have is my understanding is that the city of urbana has finally decided a little bit what they're doing with their ARPA money, and they are going to put between one and $3 million on that new recreation community center. So at the next ARP, next full board meeting, I am going to ask Tim from the Urbana Parks Department, if you re recall, we've had a request on the shelf until we found out what they're going to do. So they're giving between one and three million, my guess is it's gonna be two, but they're at least committed to giving them some sort of money. Um, I'm gonna ask Tim co to come and present um, a little bit about their plans for the meeting or for the building and what they plan to do with it. Um, and our, my hope is that we as a body can decide at that meeting whether or not we're gonna fund um, that project just be and that and just if you want to remember this would be coming out of the community violence prevention money um, specifically because that project is driven by um, sort of a construction schedule and some grant schedules so if we're going to fund them we need to let them know sooner rather than later or we might as well just not fund them right um, the rest of the proposals that I've seen out there for community violence um, that we've had on back burners, so things like I read, I count, um, just other proposals that we've thought about but just haven't moved on. I know Ms. Carter is interested in um, expanding the sleep program into, which is the lights on houses, into Dobbins Downs, and I know Mr. Storr has done some work on that. All of those are not under the same time crunch, and so I'd like to um, consider those in the March and April meetings, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up that that ARPA section might be a little bit longer um, because I'm going to ask, uh, I haven't asked him yet, but I'm going to ask Mr. Dittmer to come and present to us about the Urbana uh, piece and then we could address the rest of them throughout the spring. I would like us to allocate all of those monies by before we leave for our July sort of recess. Um, if, or, you know, I, or I'd like to get that done because as Mr. Goss and I have discussed a lot, we want to make sure that we have enough of a timeline to expend the money that we're allocating. So all of those, and that's my only chair's report. Okay, things to put on the consent agenda, A1, A2, A3, A4, A7, A8, A9, B2, B, or I'm sorry, D1, D2, E1, and F1, I think. And that's all. Okay, real quick. I'm sorry. Could you remind me um, what was um, Mr. Bartlett's requesting amount? Um, he, I, he, I believe he's asked us for a million dollars. I have expressed to him, I doubt he's going to get that much money, but that I appreciate that I appreciate his ambition. <laughs> um, but that I, I, you know, I do. I, I'll be transparent. I do support giving him something. But I've, I've told him, you know, you got to ask for what you want, right? But that doesn't mean you get it all the time. <laughs> But I believe it was a million dollars. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Furtado. Back to you, Chair Peterson. All right. Uh, seeing no other business, uh, call this meeting adjourned.